Okay, so basics of transforming an object inside of Blender. We already started with the, the most fundamental thing, which is how to select. So again, to select objects, we are going to right click. To select objects, we're going to right click on the objects. So here, I'm selecting the camera, I'm selecting the light source, I'm selecting the cube. Now, as I mentioned, for creating objects for 3D printing, we don't really need a camera because we're not rendering something out and we don't really need a light source either for animation. So what I'm going to do is select the camera and one of the ways you can get rid of an object is by pressing the X key and you'll get a confirmation to see whether or not you want to delete it. You can click or you can press enter and delete it. I'm also going to delete the light source. So I'm going to click on it to highlight it and then I'm going to press X and then I'm going to press enter to delete that light source. Okay. Now, if you want to add things, you can add things very easily in two different ways. You can either use the tool bar over here. So we can go here and click on create and we can create, say, another cube if we wanted to. Okay. And another cube here. If you've noticed, uh, new objects that I'm creating are being created wherever the little circle is. And when I left click, I can move the little circle. Now this is called the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor tells Blender where you want things to show up when you create them. So if I move the 3D cursor here, and then I create another object. I can say a circle, put it there, or actually let me delete the circle. Let's say I want a, a sphere, okay? I can move the 3D cursor, and I can put another object, say a cylinder, okay? So that's one way to add objects, and we can move around here and see where those objects actually are, okay, in 3D space. The other way to add an object is by pressing Shift and A, and that's probably gonna be the quickest way to do it. Shift A will bring up a menu, and you'll get everything that you, you got over there in the tool menu. So if I wanna add a, a cone, it created it right on top of where, actually, you know what? Let me undo that. Let me move the 3D cursor first, and then Shift A, and then I'm gonna create a cone. All right, great. So that's all well and good. That's how you create things. Now, next, what you wanna be able to do is actually manipulate these objects. And the way that you manipulate these objects, you can do that in two different ways as well. You can either use the manipulator, and when you click on an object, so I'm gonna right click on this, there's, a, you see these, these arrows pointing to Z, Y, and X. You can use those manipulators to move the object, but I'm going to actually show you how to use the shortcut keys because that's going to be the quickest way to do it. And I'll show you how to use the manipulators as well. So you highlight an object. So I'm going to highlight this cube back here. I'm going to actually move around to it by using the middle mouse key. Okay. And if I wanted to move it, I can press G for grab and it's now attached to the cursor. If I wanted to move it in a more controlled way, I'm gonna press escape so, so for the cube to go back to where it was. If I want to do, move it in a more controlled way, I can press G and then press Z to move it on the Z axis. Press escape to go back to where it was and press G and say Y to move it on the Y axis. Okay, so then I move it over here and I can say G and then X to move it on the X axis. Okay, again, G, Z, move it up. Okay, so that's how you move objects with the hotkey. G is for grab. Now, if I want to resize an object, I can use the S key for scale. So if I say select this sphere, right click here, and I say S, I can scale in all dimensions just by moving the mouse. But if I press escape, I can do the same thing on the individual dimension, just like I could do with the grab key. So what I'm gonna do is actually select this cylinder by right clicking, let's move around to it so you can see it a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do is scale on the Z axis. You see that we've scaled the cylinder. Okay, I'm gonna select, select this cone by right clicking on it. I'm gonna scale this on the X axis. Okay, and if you move around, you can actually see what that looks like from all dimensions because we scaled it on the X axis. Okay, I'm gonna select this cube, click on it, I'm gonna scale it on the Y axis. Okay, to have a little bit more control of how we scale. And then the next transform tool we can use is Rotate. And Rotate is gonna work in a very similar way. You can select a object that you want to transform and you can press R for rotate, and then you can free rotate it by pressing R again, rotate in any direction, or I'm press escape and say R, and say I want to rotate around the X axis for the cylinder, and can rotate around the X axis, okay? And say I select this cube, and I say I want to rotate, so R, and then Z, and rotate around the Z axis, okay? Now this is rotated around the Z axis, okay? And we can select this cone, right click, rotate around the Y axis, okay? And that's what that looks like change the scene in quite a dynamic way just with those transform tools. Let's zoom out a little bit, okay? As I said, you can use the manipulators to also transform the object. So if I click on this cone, if I click on this cone, we have a manipulator in the middle of it, and I can use these arrows. By default, we have grab as the manipulator when you select an object. So if I use the, if I click on the, the green arrow, I can move this object on the Y axis or on the X axis if I click on blue, Sorry, the Z axis if I click on blue, or the X axis if I click on red. Okay. Now, if I want to scale, I can also I can select the object, and once I select the object, 
I can click on transform down here. I can click on scale, which is here. And the ends of the manipulator changed it to cubes. So I can scale on the y axis, scale on the axis, the x axis rather. And now I can, and I can scale on the z axis in either direction. Okay. And that's what that looks like. And if I rotate around, you can see what that scale looks like. That's the scaling that looked like. Okay. All right. So I'm going to rotate this cube. So I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to rotate this cube. So I'm going to select the cube and I'm going to click rotate down here to, for the rotate manipulator. Okay. So again, if I click on the red, I will rotate it around the X. And if I were to click the green, rotate it around the Y. If I were to rotate, click the blue, I can rotate it around the Z. Okay. One last thing here, you can get rid of all the transforms by selecting on the object. So if I select this, uh, this cone, select this cone and I press Alt G, it'll clear the movement or the grab. If I say Alt S, it'll clear all the scaling. Alt R will change or clear all the rotation. So again, select an object, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S to set it back to the original object. Select the object, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S, G, R, S, N, B, R, S. So all the objects are on top of each other right now, so you can't see them, but we could select one individually and delete until we got all the way back down to just our cube. Okay, so I deleted all the other objects, and you can actually see in the outliner here at the top, and I'll go over the interface next, that the only thing that we have here is the cube left. Okay, one other thing of note, if you press N, you'll get some preferences here. And if I select this, the object, one of the things here on the, the preferences is the transformation of the object. So you could also transform the object by changing some of these values. So if I wanted to rotate it, I could move this, the X rotation here, or the Y, or the Z. Pressing Alt G zeroes these out. Check, I'm pressing Alt R zeroes these out, and pressing Alt S sets the scale back down to one. So I'm gonna change this back to zero, this rotation back to zero. So this rotation is back. And the next thing I wanna show you here in this preferences tab is the 3D cursor. So the 3D cursor, as I mentioned, when you left click, it'll go wherever you want to. But if you want things to show up in the origin again, what you can do is zero out this, the 3D cursor, so that this 3D cursor is at the origin. So that when you create new objects, when you create new, new objects are created at the origin. And I will show you that here. So zero X, zero Y, zero, Z. So I'm going to delete this cube and I'm going to do a shift A to add a torus. And you see it put it right there in the middle of our origin because that's where our 3D cursor is. Okay. All right. So next, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to manipulate the interface of Blender.